Hi everyone, I hope you are doing good. In today's video, we are going to talk about the EMV 3D Secure authentication in detail. So when I say detail, I mean what are the typical components which are actually responsible for making this um, authentic work. Okay, so this time we are going to make things a little bit interesting. I will show you two demos. Um, and in these two demos, we will try to understand what actually happens when a 3D authentication is in action. And after seeing these demos, we will go back to our presentation and we will understand what actually happened behind the scenes. I'm on the visa.co.uk website uh, and uh, they have listed down two demos over here. The demo to see the seamless authentication uh, in action. And then uh, there is something that the demo tells about what happens if the authentication is challenged. Okay, so let's look at how the, uh, the EMV 3D Secure works on um, on visa right so they call it as visa secure but let's look into the action so okay so this is my phone and uh, i am on a on a website uh, or an app and i'm trying to buy something maybe i'm trying to purchase a pair of sneakers um, and i am ready to order a pair of white sneakers from that model of the sneaker that i want i will add to the cart so let's just check this out I will just submit the order. Now, as soon as I submit the order, 3DS authentication is coming into action here and the order got placed. Now, we didn't realize what actually happened in a fraction of a second. There was something, some validation that happened in the background, right? And you could see that Visa logo uh, flashing in the middle of the screen and that's it, job done. It was a low risk transaction and therefore you don't really need to uh, worry too much about further authenticating the card holder. Now let's see what happened behind the scenes. Okay. So this is again something that Visa proposes, but we are going to go back to our presentation and look into some of these entities in detail. So if you see what actually happened behind the scenes is um, the consumer places an order through an online merchant, right? So basically the card holder places an order on the merchant portal. And then there is this EMV 3D secure process that kicks in. Now we are going to look into this process in detail. Visa has just told you that there is a process, the circle process that you see in the middle, but we will look into in detail in, in terms of what actually happens here. Then um, what happens is that there's a third step. Issuer um, will say whether uh, to authenticate or not to authenticate, whether to say a yes to this transaction or no and um, depending upon whether it's a low risk or a high risk transaction. If it's a high risk transaction, what happens is what we are going to see next. So let's now check out the second demo here, which is the demo to see the simple authentication, what happens when it is challenged. Okay, so let's see when this transaction is challenged. If it's a high risk transaction for some reason and it's challenged, then what happens? So same thing, uh, same pair of sneakers that I want to buy. I'll go ahead. I'll add the Snickers to my cart and I will try to do a checkout from here. All of my details are basically filled in and then I will submit the order. Now, when I submit the order, Visa is doing this authentication and it says, oops, sorry, hold on. We cannot place the order. There is one more step to go. Now it says verify by phone. We just sent you a verification code or text message. You will look into your phone. You will find that verification code coming in. You will write the verification code in this box over here. And then you will say confirm. And Visa will say yes. Thank you very much, sir. And now your order has been placed. What happens behind the scenes in this infographic? Let's just see. So the process starts in the same way. I place my order on the merchant portal. Then the authentication, the EMV 3D secure authentication kicks in. And this time, because it was a high risk transaction, the issuer said, uh, I'd like to validate you further. And that's exactly what we just saw over here. So this high risk area is what actually happened here. So you can see they have mentioned, right? Merchant sends the 3DS request with transaction and uh, and device data through a 3DS provider. We will look into 
uh, in detail of how this happens you know what are the entities that handle this transaction and that handle this process from the merchant to, to the, the uh, further um, onward side of the process and then you know you can see this transaction you know issuer receives data and then determines whether additional authentication is required or not required and then transaction is considered higher disk so the con consumer will need to take an extra authentication step in order to get the transaction authorized so he says uh, you have to wait you have to go back and transaction can either be declined or prompted for a consumer challenge consumer is challenged and we have successfully met the challenge okay so now that we have seen these two demos we will go back to our presentation and uh, we will try to understand the authentication process in detail okay so as we all know that there are three domains which are a part of the 3ds authentication mechanism right and what are these three domains these three domains as we have also discussed this in the last video are the issuer domain the acquirer domain and the interoperability domain now what are these three domains as the name says issuer domain is more on the issuing side so things like how do the uh, uh, enrollment of the cards work um, things like how is the 3ds authentication going to work so all of that is basically a part of the issuer domain now in the acquiring domain uh, we have another set of responsibilities which is basically how do the uh, merchants get onboarded for 3ds uh, authentication the third domain over there is the interoperability domain which is basically the domain on the networking side um, so entities like visa mastercard what is their role uh, in facilitating or exchanging the requests and responses between the acquiring side and the issuing side now there are three more uh, subcategories which we are going to talk about um, in the detailed discussion and those three categories are acs which is the access control server now this is basically on the issuing side. We did talk about ACS in the last video. So today we will look into um, further in detail about the role of ACS in the authentication process. Then uh, we are also introducing a new entity called as Merchant Plugin, which is MPI, which is again on the acquiring side. And what is the role of MPI uh, in the authentication process? And then lastly, we are going to talk about another entity called as directory server or DS, which is on the network side or the scheme side. Okay, so what we will do is we will discuss in detail. Now, I've actually drawn this diagram and um, after drawing this diagram um, that explains the authentication flow, I realized that uh, the picture is not... Um, um it's kind of a little um it's it's um what i have done is i have actually taken this picture and put on the miro board so now we will go back again to the miro board where i can at least zoom in uh, a little bit on this picture and then we can uh, do a quick walkthrough now you can see on the miro board the same 3ds authentication flow uh, we will start going through this flow but let me tell you a few uh, things of how to read this flow so basically you can see there are um, steps written from 0 to 14 or 15 I believe and these are the set of steps that are actually a part of the authentication as well as um, as well as the authorization of the payment okay so both and there are two different kind of arrows that you can see uh, in red there is a one uh, arrow which is a dotted arrow uh, and that arrow will denote what are the 3ds flow um, steps in this um, in this process and the arrow in bold will tell you what are the steps in the normal payments flow so uh, you know so basically just to give you that segregation of how the 3ds flow is added on top of the payment authorization the text that you see there in green is basically some of the important aspects um, about that particular step 
So maybe some entities that need to be validated. So what are those entities, etc. is something that I have also added. So now what we will do is we will go ahead and um, start reviewing this process. Uh, don't worry about it if you um, find it difficult to go over this process uh, for the first time. Uh, it's pretty normal. It does take time because uh, some of these entities are new. So it's absolutely normal if you don't get it for the first time. Um, I would suggest you to um, come back to the video again, see it a couple of times. Uh, if there is any specific segment that you want to revisit, you can just replay that particular portion. You can be comfortable with the overall process. Okay, And of course, there are multiple different other um, uh, resources available online as well, which well, once you get the basics right, um, you can just go ahead and explore yourself and you can read a little bit more. So how does Visa do this? How does MasterCard does it? All of those things is something that you can do it again once you have the base build up. So let's get started. Okay, so where is our step zero here? Uh, our step zero starts from here, the purchasing side, right? So I as a card holder, I go to a website, a merchant website, and I make a purchase. Uh, so there's a request that I initiate that I want to buy a, a good or maybe I want to buy a service and therefore I make a purchase there right now the merchant will um, have to verify um, my card first and myself as well first right because both of us cannot see each other we are, we are, we are not physically uh, co-located so if it's all online uh, which we also call it as card not present scenarios okay so uh, the merchant has to validate has to make sure that i am a legitimate customer my card details are also legitimate and therefore what he will do is he will collect some of my details for example uh, the pan which is the card number the expiry date the transaction amount um, the currency in which the payment is being made and the transaction date on which i have tried to initiate this transaction now all of these details are basically collected and there is a verification request that gets generated and the merchant will transfer this request to MPI. We have already talked about three entities which we are introducing in this video, which is ACS, uh, the, the DS and the MPI, right? So he will transfer these details to MPI, which is um, an entity that is on the acquiring side. And um, once MPI gets these details, MPI will further review and send it across to DS, which is on the networking side. DS will take this request and then send it to the ACS, which is on the issuing side. And then um, ACS will have their, ACS has its own uh, sort of uh, information, which they can use to validate. And once the uh, validation is done, there will be a response and that is being sent back. Uh, and then the response flows all the way back to MPI uh, and then from MPI it goes back to the merchant and um, and that's how the uh, first set of authentication works. Um, as you remember in the old process of 3DS, once you initiate the process, it takes you to the issuer portal, it takes you to the issuer website, right? And that was something like a uh, not a very um, user friendly or not a very good experience for the cardholder because um, Many a times, you know, he's on the merchant website and there's a different flow of things happening over there. And all of a sudden, just when he's making the payment, he has to um, move to a different uh, portal, to a different website and has to do all sorts of payment authentication. And there there was a risk of card abandonment, basically saying that, you know, um, I, I'm not interested to buy this. Maybe I'll come back again tomorrow. Um, there's a lot of hassle in, in doing the payment. So, but nevertheless, we'll go through this process, you know, what this was. So, in, so this is basically your step seven, which is basically a payment authentication request, right? So this is again um, initiated. And uh, then after that, uh, what happens is that um, there is an authentication uh, that is happening between um, the issuing side and the card holder, right? As I said, it will take you it will read there is a redirect process that takes you to the um, issuing portal and the authentication will happen on the issuer issuing issuers website and then um, the payment authentication response is being sent to the merchant right so the merchant merchant now knows that um, the card holder has been routed and uh, you know he's got this response back and now this response is being sent to the merchant and and then after that um 
the merchant will uh, take that response and that response and then further you can see here is sent to the acquirer right in the form of an authorization request so it's like saying okay i have uh, got the response now please authorize this payment right uh, we have validated that the customer is legitimate his card details are legitimate now please go ahead and validate this payment now this is where the authorization request goes on to the uh, acquirer then the acquirer will uh, transfer this request to the network because he cannot speak with the issuer directly right there has to be some connection in between the acquiring side and the issuing side and therefore the network will do that so network gets that um, payment authorization request and then the network will transfer this request back to the issuing side issuing side gets this request issuing side will validate um, uh, you know with acs because this is the component on the on the acs side right and then um, once the validation has been done um, so this uh, basically uh, the response you know that uh, is being sent is is actually in parallel when the validation is being done that then itself the payment authorization response is being sent back to the network network sends the response back to the acquirer and the acquirer will send it back to the merchant and that's how the authorization of the payment is also completed now what we will do is we will look into how emv 3ds which is the new enhanced 3ds or also called as 3ds2 mechanism actually helps to simplify this overall process okay so, so now you can see there are segregated environments right there is a 3d requester environment there is an acs environment on the issuing side and then there is a ds environment the directory server environment on the networking side now the step one is basically the step where the card holder initiates a 3d secure transaction and the relevant information is then sent to the 3ds server then as a part of the step two what happens is that the 3ds server will send the authentication request to the payment network which is the ds that you can see over there and finally that reaches the acs okay so that's your step number two in the step number three what happens is that the issuer um, will at this uh, time decide whether to continue with the frictionless process as in you know uh, no need to challenge or if he feels that there is a high risk in the transaction or if he, there is a further validation required then he will challenge the flow and return the result within the authentication response okay now what happens is that uh, as a part of step four uh, the 3ds server informs the the browser regarding the issuer's decision okay so on on the app or the browser the issuer's decision is being shown if the issuer has decided to frictionally frictionlessly authenticate the card holder then the transaction has been completed right so there is nothing else that needs to be done in that case however if the issuer decides to challenge the card holder then the transaction continues with the next step and um, in step number five as you can see here what happens is that uh, the uh, the browser will send the challenge request okay uh, the browser will init initiate a challenge request and then that challenge request is is being sent uh, to uh, through the card holder okay and the issuer will get that and issuer will do the authentication and once the authentication is uh, done then the challenge response will be uh, the issuer's response to the request that was made the challenge request and that response is now ready and it can indicate the result you know whether um, it is successful not successful etc so that result is then uh, communicated as you can see it's a very simplified process right and, and the set of steps that you see in green only come into picture when the challenge um, when when the transaction is being challenged by the issuer if the transaction is not challenged by the issuer then there are just a certain set of, set of steps basically four steps that are required in the overall process and that's why this is called as a frictionless process uh, and the second aspect to that is when it is challenged okay so with that we come to an end of this uh, video i hope you found this useful there are some reference links that i will also mention in the description of the video so you can go and check it out so with that i will take your leave and i will see you all once again in another exciting video on payments domain or data or product management thank you very much take care goodbye